हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू शून्य आई एस टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स रिलेटेड टू करंट अफेयर्स फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज एग्जामिनेशन प्रिलिम्स 2023 रिलेटेड टू करंट अफेयर्स क्लास इन दिस सीरीज आई विल बी कवरिंग ऑल द हाई हिल्डिंग टॉपिक्स इन अ वे ऑफ टर्म्स इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स विल बी कवर्ड schemes and programs by the government important terms schemes and programs by the government will be covered today i am going to take the part 1 of the terms before going to see what we are going to discuss in today's terms let's see about our current affairs crash course for prelims you can subscribe to the lectures and can also look into the magazine that is samadhan which is very comprehensive to the point and relevant for your current affairs of prelims 2023 plus what happens upsc is very keen in asking questions related to economic technologies like national payment corporation of india aadhar aadhar enabled payment system because these technologies lead to financial inclusion getting the point so in today's terms i'll be taking digital currency virtual currency cryptocurrency central banking digital currency and e rupee what is the thin line difference amongst them so let's begin before going to start with digital currency and virtual currency all together let's have a look at the evolution of currency we started with barter system and now we are with the bitcoins how we progressed slowly steadily after barter system we started exchange through the bullions of gold then to metal coins that we study in our medieval times very much jital and tanka you remember after that paper money came into vogue class in the beginning you remember paper money was itself backed by gold now at present time in india this paper money is backed by sovereign government remember these small points also for your prelims then came the emergence of plastic cards electronic money with the emergence of internet upi and virtual currency this gave form to the digital currency and it is virtual currency so let's move ahead now class to understand the terms related to the currency let's understand how it functions earlier what used to happen that if you want to exchange a commodity then you have to pay in cash you will give other person a bank note in exchange of the commodity now our lives have become easier because of digital wallets okay class digital currency is same as physical currency is same as physical currency but stored in electronic form or digital form okay is same as there is no difference in digital currency and physical currency basically without having the currency in physical form you cannot have it into digital form here it is not being issued digitally getting it but because of the emergence of the technology you can store it in the different kinds of wallets like phone pay paytm mobiquick different kinds of wallets are there getting it digital currency can be regulated or unregulated
getting it unregulated digital currencies are called as virtual currencies class what happens understand digital currency because it is backed by physical currency it is issued by a financial institution it is issued by a financial institution this physical currency you get from bank and bank gets it from central bank virtual currency is unregulated currency it is developed by a closed group network of organizers based on particular network protocol thoda sa samajhte hain is point ko all virtual currency does not mean cryptocurrency first of all virtual currency could be of gaming zone if you are playing a game online among that closed community you can exchange the gaming chips to the other party and other party can also exchange those chips those are valuable as a virtual currency into that particular community and that is unregulated it is not issued by any financial institution or central bank now this particular virtual currency term became more popular after 2009 when bitcoin or cryptocurrencies came into the vogue cryptocurrency is also a type of virtual currency like bitcoin ethereum private networks mine those currencies through their algorithms and they are the governing bodies it is not backed by any financial institution or central bank therefore they are called as virtual currency got it cryptocurrency speciality is that it is based on blockchain technology specifically speaking decentralized blockchain technology all the members of the particular community will get access to what changes are being made into the particular cryptos whereas when financial institutions are involved it is regulated by a centralized institution hence regulation will bring automatically a centralized institution you get the point we will discuss in detail central central digital currency centralized digital currency in the form of cbdc that for which rbi has come up with a concept note before that let's discuss what is difference between digital currency and cryptocurrency class upsc will ask you two statements related to the cryptocurrency digital currency and sometimes students get confused let's understand the differences very carefully digital currency is fully centralized because it is backed by a financial institution whereas cryptocurrency is fully decentralized here because financial institutions are there in digital currency it has regulations for example upi bank regulations are there okay whereas it is not surrounded by any legal formalities private community is there transaction directories are kept secret because of our privacy the transaction directories are kept secret for example if peer to peer transaction has happened from one person to a merchant then that transaction is only monitored by bank not by all the person who are related to the bank whereas in cryptocurrency all the persons who are having that particular bitcoin or ethereum or connected to that polygon or Uh, particular network they will get access to what change has been done this that is more of a public hence transaction directories is visual to all confuse nahi hona hai exam mein cryptocurrency mein transaction directories are vi uh, available to understand by every person whereas in digital currency the directories are not available for all the parties digital currencies are not encrypted basically it's a conversion of rupee into the digital wallets whereas it is highly encrypted cryptocurrencies are highly encrypted got it as we have talked about the cryptocurrencies there has been a surge in the adoption of cryptocurrencies by the different countries itself like sand dollar 
by bahamas what will be the question india is the first country in the world to pilot a project related to cbdc that statement will be wrong for your upsc examination you are getting the point bahamas has already adopted sand dollar e naira by nigeria jamdex by jamaica moreover the emergence of bitcoin ethereum doge coin so many coins solana coins are there class what is the problem if there is already a cryptocurrency understand the fine concept here so many cryptos are there what is the problem and why a central government is mulling over to launch cbdc even facebook facebook has said that in the future it is going to launch libra as their crypto what is happening this is giving rise to an alternate parallel economy alternative parallel economy which will be a threat to the monetary sovereignty threat to the monetary sovereignty of a country because the policies designed by the government of india implemented by banks the regulation by central banks will not be effective in these alternative economies and they will pose threat to the monetary sovereignty and it will it will lead eventually to the economic anarchism till now we were aware about political anarchism this may lead to the economic anarchism as well therefore class what has happened central bank has come up with the concept note and a pilot project of cbdc for that matter if a central banking digital currency is launched central banking digital currency is launched you must understand that that cannot be brought without the amend without the amendment of rbi act reserve bank of india act 1934 during the budget session of 2021 2022 presented by our finance minister into the finance bill a legal framework for introduction of central banking digital currency on a pilot project basis was enacted remember this as a fact okay in the budget session a finance bill to give effect to the central banking digital currency was enacted got it now class let's understand what is central banking digital currency central banking digital currency currency is basically a debt instrument currency is basically a debt instrument it's a liability on the issuer who is the issuer here the central bank is the issuer it's a liability on the central bank and an asset for the holder if i am holding a currency it's an asset for me therefore any currency any rupee any note is basically a potential claim hence central banking digital currency is an a form of electronic claim just like normal rupee we have therefore it is called as e rupee this representation you will find therefore it is called as e rupee now class rbi defines cbdc as legal tender issued by as legal tender issued by central bank in digital form 
सिंपल डेफिनेशन इज देयर दिस इज अकिन टू द फिजिकल करेंसी द नॉर्मल नोट दैट वी आर यूजिंग द नॉर्मल क्वाइंस दैट वी आर यूजिंग इट इज सिमिलर टू दैट एंड इट विल परफॉर्म ऑल द सिमिलर फंक्शन एक्सेप्ट दैट इट इज इन द डिजिटल फॉर्मेट ओके नाउ क्लास अंडरस्टैंड थिन लाइन हियर ई रूपी is not a digital representation of cash it is not a digital representation of cash it is cash in itself e rupee is cash in itself issued in a token form or a digitized form getting the point it will work as a store value it will work as a measurement like 10 rupees note 50 rupees note measuring the value as well as a mode of payment like we do with the physical currency okay got to the definition of it now one important question that will be coming to your mind is that why do we need cbdc because it is a form of electronic currency or digital currency a claim on the rbi why do we need so when we already have UPI in the place. UPI is doing the same function. Got it? Why do we need CBDC then? Class, understand here. CBDC is a liability on the central bank. Liability on central bank. That is your RBI, Reserve Bank of India. whereas unified payment interface system which can be linked with different wallets how we are paying right now we are using our wallets for any kind of digital payments different kinds of wallets we are using now when you are claiming that for example paytm or phone pay whenever you are claiming your money you are not directly claiming from the rbi in the digital wallets you are claiming the money from different banks or the wallet service providers hence it is a liability on the bank got it CBDC is a direct liability on the RBI whereas UPI or different kinds of wallets is a liability of bank because you have linked your bank account through the wallet system okay now hold a line one more once more what will be the impact of these two things the vision is bigger vision is very bigger liability of bank central bank it means that the credit risk or the liquidity for example there is a situation of bank run like we have seen sometimes there are cases of bank run because of some scams some volatility into the markets then your bank may say that despite you having 10 lakhs rupees in your account bank might say as it happened in the in the time of demonetization bank may ask you you can withdraw only 2 lakhs rupees right now okay but here in case of rbi there is sovereign guarantee here the guarantee by the bank is there here the sovereign guarantee for your liquidity of currency is there hence the corporations the citizens feel more secured more stability a more trust into the digital transaction will be ensured that is the purpose of cbdc one more question understand these things because upsc is going to ask you a question there will be two statements in the examination cbdc will be liability on the central bank or reserve bank of india whereas the wallet payment system is a liability on the banks therefore in the future times central bank is going to replace central bank that is rbi wants to monitor all the currencies and is going to replace the banking system of the country is it so no class understand here that in no case central bank is going to replace rather it is an 
अल्टरनेटिव सिस्टम टू सप्लीमेंट द अनबैंक्ड पॉपुलेशन बिकॉज हियर फॉर द यूपीआई यू नीड अ बैंक अकाउंट इन द सीबीडीसी यू आर डायरेक्टली डीलिंग विद द आरबीआई नो रिलेशन विद द बैंक इज रिक्वायर्ड हेंस इट विल लीड टू मोर फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन दो पीपल हु आर नॉट हैविंग बैंक अकाउंट गेटिंग द पॉइंट उसके बाद अगर मुझे ऐसा लगता है एज अ सिटीजन आई नीड मोर सिक्योरिटी विथ माई मनी वाई द सी बी डी सी विल नॉट बी एबल टू रिप्लेस द बैंक इज द रीजन दैट बैंक नॉट जस्ट कीप्स योर मनी इट गिवस यू इंटरेस्ट ऑन द मनी it gives you loans rbi is not going to give loans to any citizen or particular corporations rbi gives money to the banks in okay repo rate reverse repo rate you understand rbi gives money to the government central government state government rbi is not going to give any money or as a in the in the form of loan to any citizens this is the functions entirely of bank which will be monitored and regulated by the rbi rbi is more of a regulatory body getting the point hence the importance of bank will never be deteriorated understood this much point ab one question in your mind should also be there it, it will be a question in the examination because you are going to keep your money with the rbi you are also keeping your money with the bank are both of them similar rbi has thought about it in the concept note that cbdc should be remunerative that it should it be interest generating because people are keeping their money with the rbi but rbi said understand the importance of it rbi said basically cbdc is basically a representation or replacement of cash physical cash in the economy we want a less cash economy less cash economy therefore cbdc is going to replace physical cash jab hum apne ghar mein cash rakhte hain kya is that cash generate any kind of interest no cash will generate only interest when it is into the banks or invested into mutual funds stock markets wherever you are investing that money but cash itself does not generate any interest therefore rbi has gone up with the idea that cbdc will not be interest generating it will not be remunerative in terms of keeping it will be more stable it will be more secure got the difference of it so basically cbdc and you and present form of cash it's more like situation you know like why cbdc is required because लाइक ब्लॉक चेन टेक्नोलॉजी ने ट्रांजेक्शन बदल दिए ब्लॉक चेन टेक्नोलॉजी ने ट्रांजेक्शन बदल दिए बिटकॉइन ने पूरा हालात बदल दिए आरबीआई के हिसाब से करेंसी तो आज भी वही है दोस्तों जो कल थी बस सीबीडीसी ने लेन देन के हालात बदल दिए वो जज्बात बदल दिए और इस तरीके से अब हम नाउ वी विल बी हैविंग एन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कैश Don't say it just a currency. It is electronic current uh, cash. Clarity is there. Now one more thing I want to discuss with you. Rationale behind CBDC. UPSC asks sometimes very basic question because this idea is still into the nascent form. What are the objectives of the CBDC? Three objectives. very important first of all minimizing cash and cash management system rbi recognizes that still the most preferred form of day to day transaction is cash 
the total cost of printing transferring storing handling of the cash costed around 4984 crores rupees in the year 2021 2022 by the rbi which is huge huge amount therefore we want to reduce this cash plus why people prefer cash preference is there for cash despite having digital currency in the upi mode reason being upi stores your data there is chances of leakage of data this cbdc directly deals with the citizen bypassing the banks and hence provides more anonymity like for example i am having cash and i am giving a person prem 100 rupees 500 rupees 10000 rupees nobody is knowing it it's an anonymous transaction similarly while transferring cbdc we are directly bypassing banks only rbi will get to know one objective is this minimizing cash and management system second is financial inclusion financial inclusion jam trinity had been a game changer jan dhan aadhar mobile linkage jan dhan account jan dhan account required bank accounts aadhar linked and then mobile linked what happens this has created a revolution into the financial inclusion now we want to move a step ahead in the financial inclusion now we want to serve the unbanked population into the remote areas got it the people are having cash see cbdc is a is directly a rep digital representation of cash now we want to re replace the cash in the hands of unbanked people with the cbdc we want to replace the cash in the hands of unbanked people by the cbdc because they will be directly transacting with the cbdc we don't need to have any bank only a wallet system will be there you can have that wallet and transact money without having any contact with any bank this will provide finan more financial inclusion also cbdc is having design where peer to peer transaction can happen p2p transaction can happen even without internet the design model is still into the progress so going forward internet will, will also be not required for that transaction jaise cash transfer karne ke liye cash haath mein dene ke liye hum internet nahi chahiye similarly cbdc transact karne ke liye hame internet nahi chahiye hoga going forward this is an idea third point is cross border monitoring of transactions cross border monitoring of transactions right now cross border transactions are governed with swift also swift you would be aware okay india is the highest recipient of remittances worldwide many people are doing some scams like vijay mallya they have taken lot of money now these kind of scams could be stopped if they are directly monitored by rbi now our and in the present scenario rbi is dependent on the banks through its prompt corrective action programs through different programs so that these kind of scams does not happen but now with the launch of cbdc rbi can directly monitor it moreover collaboration among different central banks of currencies is happening so that a uh, it 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 is not just a collaboration of banks central banks will collaborate to monitor the cross border transactions which will also reduce the uh, money for illicit trade terrorism trafficking these kind of money will also be monitored here got the point Now let's understand what's difference between CBDC and cryptocurrency. CBDC and cryptocurrency class basically 
both of them are made up of blockchain technology blockchain technology can be of two types one is centralized distributed ledger technology distributed ledger technology it means that various nodes are there for the transaction and it will it will have a central aspect but it will be based on the algorithms generated by the blockchain whereas another aspect is decentralized blockchain technology this is cryptocurrency mostly these are virtual currencies governed by private organizations okay basically the founders and based on their network protocols one more difference that cbdc is basically not as i have already told not a digital representation of cash okay Do, not a digital representation or equivalent of cash it is cash in itself okay whereas cryptocurrencies are virtual currencies it is not any it is not any kind of transaction it you cannot it is not a fiat currency per se it is backed by centralized organizations it is legal tender no one can deny it into that particular country whereas cryptocurrencies can be denied for example you are going to buy a burger you can buy it from cbdc and if that is run on the full scale then the particular merchant or the shop cannot deny the cbdc at any cost but they can deny the cryptocurrencies moreover for india just like the value of 10 rupees 100 rupees 1000 rupees is there similarly the value varies for various countries dollars cbdc would be there okay as we have discussed about sand dollar e naira of nigeria their cbdcs are there similarly india's cbdcs will be there based on their own currency valuations and it will provide stability into the currency market cryptocurrency their value remains across the geographies because it's a private network for example if facebook is launching libra what will happen the value of libra across all the users of the globe will be same which is not with the case of cbdc cbdc is just like our own currency normal currency bills coins notes impacted by inflation okay there is no impact of inflation on cryptocurrencies but it is based on the perceived value it is based on the speculation abhi bitcoin ka price badh raha hai badh raha hai badh gaya value uski value badh gayi speculate ho gaya here speculation is not there there is a fixed price to it the value is fixed got the difference between cbdc and cryptocurrency now class let's see how this works how cbdc will work i understand still there is a doubt in your mind how it will work let's see it what happens in the present banking system is rbi gives money to the bank and keep ledger of this the bank maintain everything about your account in their own ledger all your transaction details are stored in bank's ledger rbi doesn't have any power over this entire process now look at the process of transaction rbi issues digital currency which is cbdc which comes to the second or third party stakeholder which is at present banks then it comes to the end user that is you consumer of the currency earlier the ledger was maintained and owned by bank but now the rbi becomes primary owner of the ledger and bank would be the secondary owner rbi sits at one place and controls the whole flow hope the difference is now clear let's move to the next topic that is e rupee class government has launched cbdc now government has also launched e rupee now what is the difference between cbdc and e rupee first of all understand e rupee is not a digital currency basically it's a social service scheme voucher by the government okay it will be used for providing various 
benefits to the beneficiaries of the government even by the corporates to their employees so this concept is into this context what is e rupee e rupee is basically contactless e rupee is basically contactless cashless instrument for payment basically it's a kind of प्रीपेड गिफ्ट वाउचर यू नो प्रीपेड गिफ्ट वाउचर हम सब ने यूज किया होगा प्रीपेड लाइक फॉर एमेजन एमेजन गिफ्ट वाउचर्स ई गिफ्ट वाउचर्स आर देयर वॉट इज द वॉट इज कॉल्ड अ गिफ्ट वाउचर लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड if our if rupees 5000 gift voucher has been gifted by your friend to you for the amazon then it becomes that purpose specific you can spend you can purchase any kinds of products that you like on amazon within the amount of 5000 but you have to be specific with respect to amazon this money cannot be spent on flipkart or any other e-commercial websites got it similarly you have different gift cards for pantaloons you can go and purchase 5000 of amount of any um, products or apparels from the pantaloons now class understand that for the beneficiary system already what was there dbt was there direct benefit transfer was there let's little bit understand this direct benefit transfer was there direct benefit transfer works with the bank account now only those beneficiaries can avail the benefit of government schemes and programs those who are having certain bank accounts now what about the unbanked people hence e rupee will help to eliminate the exclusion error of the beneficiaries okay it will become more inclusive theek hai it's a point for governance as well not just economy it will become more inclusive for the unbanked people to become the beneficiary of the government schemes got it now how it will work if bank account is not required it will be a kind of voucher in the form of sms or qr code sms with particular number is provided to the particular beneficiary and the beneficiary will go to the specified purpose and can redeem the voucher okay through the sms number or can be provided with a qr code sent to the mobile number of that person and it can be redeemed there no bank is involved in case of e rupee transactions got it one more difference see what we have already seen how it is taking over okay one step ahead of dbt is e rupee dbt basically helped eliminate the middlemen from the transactions and it became person specific person specific if a woman is taking benefits of rupees 6000 from pradhan mantri janani suraksha yojana which is which is a conditional cash transfer scheme given after the every trimesters now that is person specific to the account linked to the particular women okay now it is also purpose specific whereas e rupee is not just person specific it is person as well as purpose specific the benefit would be for example if you are talking about lpg pradhan mantri ujjwala yojana lpg scheme there was a lot of leakages because at the point of sale 
देर वर घोस्ट बेनिफिशियरीज नाउ इफ आई एम अ बेनिफिशियरी ऑफ एल पी जी फॉर एग्जाम्पल देन आई हैव अ पर्टिकुलर ई रूपी वाउचर दैट कैन ओनली बी रिडीम्ड देर विल नॉट बी एनी घोस्ट बेनिफिशियरीज हैंस द एक्स चेकर कॉस्ट विल बी रिड्यूज इन दिस केसेस गेटिंग इट वेरियस मनरेगा स्कीम डिफरेंट स्कीम्स विल अवेल द बेनिफिट ऑफ ई रूपी इन द ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ द सब्सिडीज और बेनिफिट बाई द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया गेटिंग इट नाउ क्लास हु हैज डेवलप्ड दिस ई रूपी हैज बीन डेवलप्ड बाई नेशनल पेमेंट कॉरपोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया देखो यही क्वेश्चन आते हैं प्रिलिम्स में नेशनल पेमेंट कॉरपोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया इन कोलैबोरेशन विथ इन कोलैबोरेशन विथ नेशनल हेल्थ अथॉरिटी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर एंड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज बिकॉज सी दिस दिस इज बेसिकली various benefits will be given to the national by the national health authority health and family wear and department of financial services will be coordinating it got it you can see into the infographics lot of information is there hope the concept is clear with you e rupee e rupee is a step towards digitization of the currency but e rupee in itself dekho exam mein aayega cbdc is a digital currency yes but e rupee is not a digital currency clear so class hope you got the clarity with few terms and understood the minute differences among them the applications of them and upsc asks these kind of questions based on the conceptual understanding of these words so keep watching the series of high yielding topics of current affairs from shunya ias to get the best marks into the civil services prelims 2023 class thank you take care let's meet into the next session all the best